get started. Um, this session will be about contributing to OpenStack. First of all, I apologize for my voice. I lost some time yesterday. I can't remember exactly when. Um, this, um, in the first part, I'll uh, introduce a, a topology of the different types of contributions and why some are more interesting than others. And, and then uh, Mark will uh, explain how Red Hat contributes to um, upstream projects in general and OpenStack in particular demonstrating the points that I made. made. Um, <coughs> so um, as this summit proves, OpenStack is now a giant ecosystem that has attracted a lot of different companies. And at the heart of this ecosystem is our, the OpenStack project. And those projects only exist through the contributions of the companies whom we will uh, form our community. And that's because uh, OpenStack is an open innovation project, which means an open source project where uh, multiple companies will contribute as equals to uh, a common independent technical background. And in this type of setting, it's, it's not really uh, the, the producers on one side and the consumers of the software on the other side. It's, uh, it's not us versus you. It's really we are all in it together. And uh, I was quoted as saying, you should not ask what OpenStack can do for you. You should ask what uh, you can do for OpenStack. The, the best way of make, having something happen in OpenStack is actually to contribute the resources to make it happen within uh, the common project. So I worked for uh, Linux distributions before, and uh, it's quite difficult for consumers of the distributions to become producers of the distro. The, the barrier of entry is quite high. It's, um, it's, it's difficult to learn all the distrib distribution policies, all the languages that are, uh, that are involved in, in uh, distribution packaging. It's too far away from, from what regular users of the distro are actually uh, confronted to. And that's something I wanted to uh, really fix early on in the OpenStack project, make it really easy to contribute. And we did that by two uh, different tricks. The first one is uh, using the Python language. Uh, Python is easy to, to learn, it's easy to read. And it's also uh, very friendly to the population of, of users we have, which are mostly uh, systems administrators. Um, so they can uh, look into the code when it, when, when it fails and, and see why it fails and then propose a bug fix. So it's really easy for them to become, to go from consumers of the software to become producers of it as well. The, the other part of, of, of it is maintaining an extremely um, open development infrastructure and extremely easy to, uh, one that is extremely easy to contribute to. And uh, we, we base that on what we call the four opens. You might, you might have already seen um, open source, the source code is available, it's up on GitHub. It's also Apache licensed. Uh, it's open community. We have uh, technical meritocracy. Um, we have elective leads. We have um, uh, public meetings that are logged that you, you, can, you can come back to. All our meetings are happening on IRC where they are logged. So it's quite, quite easy for you to, uh, to see what we are discussing. We, don't, we hold no meetings in private. It's really a transparent uh, community. We do uh, open design, so we have the four days of the design summit that are happening during this uh, OpenStack summit, where everyone that wants to contribute a new feature or, or wants to work on something for the next six months will be able to uh, confront his ideas with other developers that are, um, that are forming the OpenStack uh, developer community. And finally, it's uh, open development. That is, every change that is proposed to one of the OpenStack projects will end up in our code review system. And that includes uh, infrastructure changes. Um, so uh, if, and that this is public, you can, you can actually comment and participate in the review. You can see why some changes are accepted or rejected. You can contribute your own uh, insight to, uh, to this. So uh, it's, it's really an um, extremely transparent process and inclusive process for people to turn from uh, consumers of the software to, uh, to producers of the software. So in the, in the rest of my, time, I'll, uh, I'll introduce a topology of the different types of contributions. And there are multiple ways to look at it. One, one way is uh, where, where uh, does your contribution actually end? So we, ha we have what we call uh, the core projects that we probably all, all know about now. Uh, those are the main deliverables of the project, the, the core services that you deliver. That's far from being the only project that, that you can contribute. 
have what we call the library project, where it's an OpenStack Commons, um, soon to be a relay also, <laughs> that, um, that is, takes all the common code between the different core projects and make a common library that will um, uh, be used by multiple core projects at the same time. We have uh, the Python client libraries, which are used by clients to um, access those core services. Uh, we have what we call the gating projects. Every change that is proposed to one of the, the OpenStack projects uh, ends up triggering uh, what we call the gate, which is a series of tests to make sure that we didn't break anything in the process of, propos of proposing that change. Um, so there is all the gate infrastructure. We basically deploy OpenStack at every change and pass a battery of, of uh, integration tests. So you can contribute to that gating infrastructure, all the software we are using to deploy uh, OpenStack in that setting. Um, you can also contribute to the integration test suite that we are running to make sure that we didn't break anything. Those are great areas to, to contribute to. And last but not least, we have the supporting project. Um, there is the documentation without which all the code that we are producing would probably be useless. Uh, there is um, all, the, all the other core infrastructure projects, ranging from the Garrett uh, RC bot that we, ha we have in our RC channel to the Jenkins um, system that we are using for continuous integration. And all this is expressed as um, code that lives in a, in a code repository. So if you want to participate in um, the administration of our core infrastructure, you can just propose changes to those projects. So it's not just code, it's also documentation, it's also uh, puppet for sidebiz, it's um, lots of different things. So where, it's, it's one way to look at it. The other, uh, another way to look at it is how, um, what, what form does your uh, contribution metric take? So one, 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 one form is what I call the direct contributions, the obvious contributions. Uh, there is um, the new feature or a new bug fix that's a um, contribution that will end up in the code of, uh, of the project. There are also indirect contributions uh, like bug trim, uh, make sure, making sure that all the incoming bug reports are um, triaged and prioritized correctly. There is a uh, release management that I'm currently doing, uh, which is making sure that we deliver something at the end of those six months, uh, making sure that we have uh, all, the pro all the development process follows uh, the right cadence and, and rhythm. There is a stable maintenance, um, backporting all the fixes, all the interesting bug fixes that were found in the current development cycle to the stable releases of OpenStack and making point releases so that we, we can actually upgrade to a, to a stable infrastructure and, and inherit all the bug fixes. There is a vulnerability handling, um, that is making sure that uh, you handle all the security reports that are reported to you in a timely manner and, and communicate the fix correctly um, with all the different interested parties. And finally, there is a general technical advocacy at conferences, uh, making sure that OpenStack is uh, well maintained and, and, and explained to, um, to, to everyone. Those are indirect contributions, but they are very valuable. So you might ask where, uh, where should I contribute or how should I contribute? Is there a better place or a better way to contribute? Actually, it, there is no um, like um, best area to contribute or um, best way to contribute. It's, it's, it's what's important. It's not uh, where or how you're contributing, it's actually why. Um, why you are, uh, you are contributing and, and what, 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 what is the objective of your contribution? What, what will it change in OpenStack? And there are two different types of, of, of contributions if you look at that aspect in particular. Um, and there is what, what I call tactical contributions. Tactical contributions are um, if you, for example, propose a bug fix for a bug that you encounter in your precise use case. Um, or if you contribute a feature that makes sure that your, um, your own software, the software that you're producing as a company, interacts well with OpenStack. Those, those are um, made because they matter primarily to you and your company and, and uh, not necessarily um, to, um, to, to OpenStack in particular. And those are, uh, um, there are a number of drawbacks. Um, those are valuable contributions. I mean, the, the OpenStack wouldn't be where it is today uh, if we were uh, close to tactical contributions and those uh, made, what made OpenStack what it is today. But they have a number of drawbacks. Uh, they tend to um, expand the scope of the project to add uh, technical depth. And if you don't uh, produce equivalent QA resources in, in, uh, in OpenStack in parallel, then you basically um, make it more, uh, more difficult to, um, 
to release and redilute the quality of the end result. Uh, the solution to that is what I call strategic contributions. Um, in strategic contributions, you are making the contribution primarily to ensure the long-term health of the project and uh, making sure that the, the, the end result is of, is of better quality. You can find strategic contributions in four, uh, four different areas. One is commonality, making sure that um, you reduce duplication of effort, you actually uh, refactor code so that you end up using the same code in, in different projects. Um, that is one, one aspect. The, another is um, consistency, consistency both in the feature set, but also um, so making sure that there is no gap in, in, in the feature set of OpenStack, but also um, it's also consistency in behavior, uh, making sure that logging or, or configuration is done in the same way across all the different uh, OpenStack projects. There is security, making sure that the software is actually safe for our users to use. And there is um, quality. Quality is about fixing bugs, not only that affect your use case, but that, that affect a, lo a large portion of our users. So uh, fixing the high priority bugs with rather than your bugs. So there are a number of drawbacks to strategic contributions. They're um, usually tedious tasks, time intensive. Um, so funding resources towards strategic contributions is, is expensive. And it's, um, it's, it's difficult to sell because there is no short term return on investment. It's not beneficial directly to your company. It can be beneficial to OpenStack in general. But um, strategic contributions are essential. They're, it's what will make OpenStack win in the end. Um, you might, with tactical contribution, you might win a battle, but if you want to win the war, then you have to do strategic contributions and that's what will make uh, OpenStack um, a success in the end. And I'll also argue that it's, it's actually good for you and your company as well. Um, the doing tedious tasks and, and time intensive tasks you end up gathering good karma within the community. And with our, the way we are structured, uh, the technical meritocracy that we are using, this karma quickly translates into respect. And that respect quickly translates into influence over the direction of the company. And so uh, it, it's not just good for OpenStack, it's actually good for, for, for you to fund those, uh, those strategic contributions that are essential to, to, to OpenStack. So in, uh, in, in summary, if you don't contribute anything to OpenStack yet, you should stop now. And if you have um, a choice, please consider doing strategic contributions rather than just tactical contributions. Thank you. Questions while we do the laptop dance? No. Okay. <coughs> Maybe nobody understood me. To the mic, or I think it's for for the recording. Actually, it's not really for me. Um, I'm I'm not an owner of the technology to do this, so I'm not going to do it. I'm a, I'm an architect with an operations background, and I've actually had a hard time figuring out how to actually contribute uh, in a way that fits your company. Well, you have multiple options if you if you're not really um, uh, a code contributor. There are all the, all the indirect contributions are not code contributions. Um, you could argue that they are not measured in the same way. Um, Mark's scripts actually account for a launchpad activity, so all the bug handling he is doing is actually reported. Uh, but it's true if you, if you participate to uh, like um, stable release management or, uh, or, uh, or release management, it's not accounted for. Um, or security, in general, security handling. Um, there is a, uh, if you're proficient in one foreign language, also do translations. Um, there is also the ability to uh, to contribute more um, in the in the core infrastructure projects where, where it's not really code that ends up being deployed. It's more configurations. If you're more more CCP type than DevOps type, um, so that would be my my, my take on it. Awesome. Yeah, I guess um, like you specifically said, you're an architect. So I guess a lot of the OpenStack design discussions we're having at the later list are happening um, in the code review system. So 
So I mean, that's a huge amount of computation. So if you want to even contribute in code, you can actually get involved with the discussion. It's a really kind of driving direction. Um, so that is one other way. Okay, cool. I've never used one of these clickers before. <laughs> um, okay, so PRE has given, I guess, kind of the theoretical background, made, made some really great distinctions between different contributions, and I really like the, um, the distinction he makes between tactical and strategic contributions. Um, I guess for me that's one of those kind of tryst words uh, it's something that I've always kind of believed strongly in and um, so it's, it's, it's good to see this being talked about. Um, so we're going to talk specifically about kind of how Red Hat engages with projects and how um, we tend to make a lot of strategic contributions and, and why we do that. Um, so it's trying to put I guess more meat on the bones of, of Thierry's argument here and, and kind of give a specific example. Um, so just to give some background initially about Red Hat and OpenStack, um, we got involved with the project first um, just over a year ago. And really when I think about kind of when I got involved first, <coughs> I think the first thing we were trying to figure out was whether the project was really as kind of healthy and, and vibrant and diverse and self-governing as it seemed from the outside. Um, and really the best way of figuring that out is just to actually get involved with the project and, and contribute and kind of see how your contributions are welcomed and received and how 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 easy it is for you to actually um, make an impact on the project. Um, and all the signs were really, really good with OpenStack from the very first day that I, I submitted a patch to, to OpenStack. So um, it's, uh, to me, that's a really key indicator of, of OpenStack's future success. Um, so just some more background. At, at Red Hat, we often talk about wearing hats. Um, and that's not just because we're called Red Hat. Um, we, we'll, we'll talk about, for example, whether you're wearing your upstream hat or your um, distro hat or your like corporate hat and what what we mean there is um, I guess like Thierry talked about you know when you're making a contribution why are you making that contribution like even when you're discussing something um, it, it can be helpful to be clear about why you're making a suggestion or, or proposing something um, <coughs> and so you might be proposing it because you think it's really important to the project itself um, or you might propose it because it's important to the uh, distribution of OpenStack, or you might propose it because it's specifically important to your company. Um, and by default, I think we like our developers um, to kind of gain the trust of the community, that the community assumes that when we speak, we're speaking with an upstream hat on, and when we specifically want to um, represent Red Hat's point of view, we'll actually, <laughs> we'll say it, we'll say, you know, with my Red Hat hat on, in my company, you should do X. And that's where you're kind of stepping outside the, the your normal mode of operation, where you where you are, are thinking specifically about the project and, and just thinking about um, what Red Hat in particular wants. Um, okay, so I guess why why make strategic why make strategic contributions to projects? Um, so the first reason to me is um, the success, right? If you're <coughs> a company getting involved with OpenStack probably building a commercial product around it. And you know, you want the if you're basing it on OpenStack, you want OpenStack to be around for a long time and you want it to be hugely successful. Um, and really you can't just stand around and wait for other people to do that. You need to be in there making um, making OpenStack a success. Um, and to me that's the way to, to approach a project when you engage it is, is really look for the parts of the, the project where where you can see that, that the success might be damaged by um, a certain project, part of the project not being um, funded or resourced, I guess. So like an example might be if you see that bug triaging isn't happening very well in a project, although bug triaging isn't a very sexy thing to do in a project, um, it's really important to the project, so that's a good, a good place to get involved. Um, so it's really looking for the places where you can really make an impact um, to, to help OpenStack be a success in the long term. But another thing that actually Thierry didn't talk about was um, gaining expert trust. If you have a commercial product um, based on OpenStack, you really, you know, for it to, to, to be, um, for customers to trust that you're going to be able to, to deliver on your promises, you really need to be seen as, as um, having a lot of expertise in OpenStack, really understanding um, the technology, but also understanding the dynamics of the community, um, you know, how things are going to evolve into the future, how how um, how, you, how how you can kind of um, gain influence when you get involved. Um, and 
last reason to make strategic contributions as CRE did point out was influence um, and so <coughs> you know if you're if you're involved with the project you're kind of building a commercial product they hope that you really need to feel that um, you can you can deliver on your promises by uh, actually yeah, getting the features getting the the direction of the project um, set in, in, in a way that kind of um, delivers on your promises, as I said. So to do that, you really need a lot of influence within the project. And the best way to gain influence, as Thierry said, is to, to build up that karma, um, make lots of contributions that, that help make the project better. So here's some of Red Hat's open stack team. And I, I guess what I wanted to get on to next was, you know, what, what specifically have some of these guys and Gal in this room done? Um, what have they been up to recently in, in OpenStack? So I th thought I'd talk first about some of the tactical contributions we've made. Um, I won't talk too much about these for, except to kind of show what what I think of in terms of tactical contributions of you know making OpenStack work very well on, on Fedora and RHEL. Um, you know, integrating some of uh, Red Hat's kind of technology to, into the project, like the guest mess and Cupid. Um, you know, contributing to projects that are going to be very important for some of our enterprise customers, like um, LDAP, LDAP integration and, and quantum and stuff like that. So that's, I guess, that's examples I see of ta tactical contributions. Very important. We have to continue to be doing, doing this kind of work. But I guess we're here really to talk more about strategic contributions. So these are some of Red Hat's more strategic contributions into the project. And it's, it's really a mixed bag of stuff. Um, and really, to me, this was all the stuff that I really felt that could benefit from you know, Red Hat developers being involved with. Um, I think we made a good impact in some of these things. So the first one is kind of infrastructure issues. So it's you know, the basic um, technical infrastructure of, of all the different projects. So um, how configuration files are handled, that kind of stuff. Um, bug fixes, and again, not tactical bug fixes, but you know, looking at bugs that are being reported by users on, in, in all different sorts of contexts and actually helping getting the bug count down by, by fixing some of those bugs. Um, code reviews, I think it's it's really essential to be involved with um, code reviews and, and really help, help drive the, the project in, in a, a good direction by contributing your thoughts to, to the code reviews. And it's another great way of building up um, of respect and influence because you take the time to, to review some of the patch in great detail and really provide good feedback that kind of gets the patch um, in, in a better direction I think and that's something that's valued by people. Um, stable branch was something that I guess was we started just at around the same time that Red Hat got involved with the project um, so I, I, I thought that was a very important thing to the project as well in that terms of if you um, start using a release like Essex, you really want to, to be able to get bug, bug fixes for that Essex release um, without having to upgrade the pods. Um, so I think that's been really well received as well. Um, OpenStack Common, as Thierry mentioned, is a, a library. And to me, it's, it's an effort to clear up some of the technical debt within OpenStack, where you've got all these different projects that are you know, quite similar in infrastructure. Um, and so they've kind of copied and pasted code from one another without kind of thinking about the kind of long-term impact of the, the maintenance of the project. And so OpenStack Common is trying to, to clean all that up and, and bring it in, into the open library. Um, vulnerability management is, is a kind of an interesting, interesting one as well. Thierry really kicked this off and really um, got, got things going well here. And I think um, OpenStack probably has one of the best vulnerability management um, processes in, in any open source project out there. The, the way security um, reports are handled and disclosure is coordinated with all the different distros is actually really, really, really good. Um, so we got involved there very early on and, and kind of helped out there. Um, release management, I guess I've been pitching in a little bit with release management around stable branch. Um, bug triage, if you want to help out with Nova in particular, um, triaging bugs in Nova is actually a, a really big problem that the Nova project has at the moment, just trying to keep on top of the number of bugs coming in and just making that initial triaging of whether the bug is valid, whether it's important. Um, and so that's that's a great way that anyone here could help out with um, con 
working with Nova. Um, we've also been doing a lot of work around continuous integration, um, not so much within the kind of core projects of continuous in integration infrastructure, but um, one of our guys, Dan Prince, has been working on a project called Smokefly, uh, which really tries to do even more continuous integration around catching um, problems as they appear in the trunk and um, basically catching those quickly and, and getting them fixed. And I guess the last thing, everything we talked about there was kind of technical strategic contributions, but we also made a big effort to really try and help with the, the, the establishment of the foundation and, and make that a success. So around you know debating um, how the foundation should be structured, um, one of our lawyers, Richard Fontana, was heavily involved with the, the drafting of the bylaws, um, and we get, became a passionate member. Um, <coughs> so I guess that's all of, or a lot of Red Hat's strategic contributions, and hopefully that kind of shows the, the contrast between kind of what we mean by tactical contributions and what we mean by strategic contributions. Um, so that's pretty much me. Um, any questions? Or so that's the credits for some proposals I used here. Any questions? guys wearing the same shirt? <laughs> he yeah. did notice that. <laughs> He's not stupid. Yeah, no. That's Mine, awesome. Mine's nice because he didn't stop hating it. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh. So just from an internal process perspective, I realize you have to wear multiple hats. found more success among different companies, this is both in your own companies as well as others that you may work with in terms of participation, in terms of having dedicated groups that are really focused on open stack participation, open source participation, as opposed to sprinkling that around? Um, we do, we, in Red Hat, we do tend to, and actually, you mentioned hats there. This is, it's quite unusual for me to actually stand here up here and really talk about Red Hat. I'm actually not used to wearing a Red Hat hat very often, so I just thought I'd point that out. Um, yeah, so within Red Hat, we tend to have a little bit of a split between, say, the guys who are doing a lot of um, work on RHEL, for example, versus the guys doing work on the upstream kernel. But you did, do need that mixture, and you do need the upstream guys being able to you know, pitch in at crunch time with the, <coughs> the, 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 the Red Hat-specific work. Um, so you know, it, I think it does help to have some separation, but Mixing the two groups is, is, is the, the important thing, I would say. I, I, would, <coughs> I would say that um, it's important that that you're, uh, the people that you push to the project actually contribute a significant share of time of their time to the project, because otherwise they don't reach the, the visibility level inside the community that is uh, necessary for you to reap the benefits of, of, of contributing to OpenStack. So um, we there are other companies that, that Red Hat is contributing to OpenStack that contribute people that never cross that threshold because they just contribute like 20% of their time. So I would I would say that it's good if it's um, people that can contribute 80% to 100% of their time working on, on the upstream project so that you can reap the benefit um, as a contributor. But uh, I agree with, with Mark, with uh, it's also important to have uh, People involved in OpenStack in all the in all the teams, like the support teams, the the, the distro teams as well, because otherwise there's there's a disconnect and then and then that would be more fun. So and, and ensuring those people have that eighty eighty percent time available, um, is it, it can actually be quite difficult because even from the perspective of the developer himself, often they might feel that their work isn't valuable unless it's really kind of Red Hat specific work. So you often kind of have to really reinforce with with people that you know. We really value your, your upstream work, and you know, often within Red Hat, we'd say that kind of rel work can just suck up 100% of your time. Just any available capacity of your time will just suck up your time. So you really need to to kind of ring fence that time to to make it as much as possible. Yeah, and I and I used to work for Canonical before, and there was this this problem as well, where um, the the distro work is like you can put any amount of time on it. It's it's really a time sucking thing. So if people that from the distros are the ones that are contributing to the 
this project generally will be useful to meet uh, all the medieval uh, time space. But I, um, when I work on OpenStack funded by Rackspace, I, I work 100% of my time on OpenStack, which made it difficult to switch to other companies because they wouldn't accept that you would work 100% not on company stuff. Uh, now I work on the OpenStack Foundation, so it's really important. Yeah, we have one half time. Thanks, guys. Thanks.